Hi, this is Todd Angelucci. You know, after having one of the biggest gut punches in my life, I have found some powerful strategies that really help overcome the fear, anxiety, depression that often comes with dealing with a trauma or overcoming some kind of trauma in life and learning to live a happier, more hopeful, meaningful life. Um, you know, one of the things that I've learned is, you know, after having some trauma or traumatic experience in a life, there's a lot of emotions that fly, you know, a lot of anxiety, a lot of fear, a lot of not knowing what to do and wanting to just be back to a quote unquote normal life, which can often be challenging for sure. You know, oftentimes, you know, it affects personal relationships, you not really feel like doing anything, overly focusing on symptoms, just trying to manage life day to day. Um, and also just trying to put the pieces back together of a somewhat normal life. And, you know, one of the things out of nowhere in my life, I was diagnosed with a brain tumor. And two weeks later, I was having brain surgery. I so was not <laughs> expecting that, you know, vague symptoms out of nowhere. And being a nurse, I was not prepared to be on the other side of that conversation, the other side of that table. The one thing that being a nurse helped me with for sure was being able to navigate the health system, being able to make some decisions that I needed to make. Um, also being a transformational health and life coach, I was able to focus on some solid things around healing and looking and doing some deep dives into that. And, and I did, I researched everything. I really started to manage and control the things that I can actually control because life at that point was like out of control. I was staring down literally, you know, not literally, but figuratively the barrel of the shotgun. I was like, what does this mean? You know, I have to live through surgery somebody in the CPU of my, my brain. And I was not prepared. I don't think anybody is, but the trauma of that was something I started to look at. But one of the biggest pieces and the biggest shifts that I had initially was what is this teaching me? What's, you know, I actually said, what's there to learn in this? One of the first thing was, you know, I just started to kind of look at like, life, like the basics of life, I learned that I was really just living in survival mode, you know, seemingly successful um, and realizing that the things that I thought were important weren't really important. Like, you know, grinding it out, overworking, doing all the things that were a symptom of some trauma that I had from early on. I started to look at this and I think that was probably the biggest powerful piece that I learned about them. One of the other things I did was I started to connect with others that have had, you know, traumatic experiences like myself. Uh, you know, there's people that were having these, these experiences and I, I met a good friend who had uh, at a young age was diagnosed with a severe form of cancer and it literally his story was just breathtaking you know gut punch in the er multiple surgeries you know coma being coded and living to tell about it and when he shared his story it just meant us a lot and he's like todd your story is powerful and i started to listen and learn from the people that have experienced things and have walked through the other side and started to live life again and you know, I'm not sure if you could relate to, you know, having, you know, a traumatic experience, you know, I, I think the world we live in now is one series of traumatic experiences after another. And often, and I didn't realize how the symptoms played out. And one of the things I started to look at was, you know, how I was feeling mentally and emotionally, what I was doing on a daily basis. And I literally started to research about, trauma, the effects of trauma. Uh, I listened to so many different podcasts and did a ton of research on this. And I, I come up with like four solid processes that I found were super helpful in helping 
live life again. Literally, you know, walk through some of the biggest challenges and and start to step into life. And one of the things that I found was key and is essential. And it was one of the first things that I looked at, and I always looked at, was looking at the basics of biology. You know, what I mean by biology was how was I feeding my body? How was I moving? And getting that dialed in. I think one of the, the biggest things that is often overlooked, especially when it comes to things of, you know, emotional, mental, and things like that is, is diet. Being a brain tumor survivor, being a surgery survivor, my brain was like hyper, hyper on fire, was hypersensitive. And I learned honestly, like hydration. And one of the things that had come out of my surgery was a lot of the doctors were saying, hey, we weren't, we're not sure what this is in your brain. You know, it took a couple weeks after surgery, which is definitely something I was on pins and needles. But my surgeon said it's inflammatory cells. And I was like, oh. So if I had inflammatory cells in my, my brain, nine times out of 10, or, you know, I was putting together that my body was a little inflamed. So I did a research. I, I dug deep. I researched a lot of top experts. I saw a lot of overlapping and I literally looked at things that would reduce inflammation. And I, I have a process I call stopping the flames of looking at really eating in a better way to stop that inflammation in the body because I think it's super key that aligns with brain health, gut health. They There's such a link between gut and brain health. It's unbelievable. The second thing that I found super helpful, especially when I was going through kind of the, the challenging times, and I'm not sure, you know, if you could relate to, you know, having had a traumatic experience like the whole equilibrium of life gets thrown off, right? It's hard to really focus. It's hard to do a lot of things. And so I call it a simple purpose plan. It's really looking at creating a medical plan if in fact you're in the throes of a medical challenge, but also having a physical, you know, emotional, spiritual plan and a real simple one, a solid structure to, to the days that lead to stacking small wins. And if you stack small wins, it starts to create this confidence. And if there is something that throws you off kilter, it puts you back into feeling somewhat in control again. The other thing that I found super helpful was um, through the course of my life, especially early on, and I really didn't connect the dots until my diagnosis and going through the brain tumor trauma that I had a lot of childhood trauma that I realized I had and I really did a lot of work to help grow throughout the years but one of the things I looked at was oh my god was this trauma that I was dealing with throughout my life kind of something that put my body in this hyper state which you know maybe I'm not going to make any links to my health issue but that it could have been for sure. But the one thing that I really noticed that I, I looked at was this type of uh, process I call self-leadership. And it's really looking at this powerful transform. It's like a transformative evidence-based model of tapping into our inner parts. And it, it, it helps that, you know, helps us kind of lead ourselves that we have these core parts and that really revolve around and helping us get to our core self and making some solid changes. I love it. I've been using this technique for a long time and I found that it was super helpful in helping release a lot of the emotions and a lot of the feelings that I had around my initial trauma. Um, the other component that I, I really, really love is looking at the, the whole process of our story you know everybody has a story right and one of the things that I found when looking at people that were affected by PTSD and the one thing that I learned about myself and a lot of people you know may 
may or may or not relate to it. I, I often didn't give my label myself a label of PTSD in growing up. But the one thing I did was I was determined to get better. And I took one step and one step and tried a lot of different things. But the one thing that I started that there's been a lot of research about and I started to investigate was looking at story. And you know, our lives are driven by stories that we tell ourselves and stories that are running through the background of our lives. And one of the fascinating things, uh, a lot of people reached out during, you know, the throes of my, my experience. And they're like, listen to this, listen to that. And I started to listen to a lot of things and started to study and research, but the power of the story and the transformation of not just understanding where we were in our story, because I think that's a teaching and learning experience, but also starting to look at what story is playing out in the story in our lives and how we can manifest change as a result of our story. I'm a huge movie fan, always been. And I, I was actually talking to somebody that was going through. And, you know, if you haven't tuned in, I, I have an amazing podcast that looks at people that have not only gone through some some amazing incredible you know traumas or stories but have learned some key steps and key strategies and helping them live a a happier more hopeful life and and there's a lot of key core parts that like add to that but one of the things that I that I've learned is you know the the hero's journey and and part of this process is learning to be your own hero. And I think we often don't realize that we're a hero because we feel like we're, you know, a zero. You know, there's times you just feel so bad, not not feeling good about ourselves, our confidence levels down. And and believe me, I was there. But one of the things that I've seen in my own life, but also in interviewing a lot of people and working with some people, is that we hit this bottom right? There's this bottom that is like, oh my God. And it could be ugly. And oftentimes it is ugly. And, and it's that one step after that. But that becomes that turning point in our story. And I, for me, I've always embraced this bad part or this low part is not good, but it's actually the best part. Now think about it in terms of a movie, getting back to the movie story, is if you you know were watching a movie and everything was just good, would you be bored? Maybe. Or if there wasn't this like kind of dive down or this part that happened or something that was thrown off kilter, whatever that is, and you see sort of a rise in the character or a learning or a reflection, um, it starts to become, it's intriguing. It's It keeps you engaged, right? If there was nothing and it was just flat, you probably wouldn't watch it, right? It's not that important. So each of us has, whatever it may be, this part of our story that we learn to embrace, we learn from, and we take steps out. And I think that is super powerful. And a lot of research around PTSD and healing, not only is it embracing ourselves and starting to look at ourselves and our body, but they actually talk about acting and getting involved in things like that because it helps walk through some of these. So I found so some amazing healing around the story. And it is just a great way to start to like real time in life heal through some of these. So um, I love these four processes. It, it you know, it really kind of helps put together a process of just living life again and getting back to life and starting to honor ourselves and our story and learning to grow. And you know, if you're interested in learning more about it, how these processes work, and if it's something you want to learn about, just message me, reach out, we could schedule a strategy session or um, talk a little bit about your story. And um, I look forward to hearing from you. Have a great day.